Hi, so I'm going to show you what you can expect coming along with Microsoft Places, even if you don't have Microsoft Places licenses. Well, what does that mean? Microsoft Places is being delivered in two parts, Places Core and Places Premium. And Places Premium will require users to have Teams Premium licenses to use, and it comes with all the advanced features. But there's quite a lot of features that are coming with Places Core that you would have as a matter of course with a normal Microsoft 365 license, like an E3 or a Business Essentials or anything higher than that. And for most users, they may just see it as an enhancement to Outlook and Teams and the way people work together. They may not even think of it as Places, but it's being introduced by Microsoft as part of the Places suite. We're going to take a look at what you get. So for this to work, I still have to have configured my room list correctly. I still have to have set up my building in places. If you haven't done these things, I've done an article on configuring rooms for room lists, and that's a good starting point. And then you can follow on with configuration for places at a basic level, and that will give you this functionality. So let's take a look. I'm in Outlook on the web, and the key to getting started is New Calendar. And New Calendar is available in Outlook on the web and in New Outlook, and also coming to New Teams. I've already set myself up with a work schedule, and a work schedule is one of these new features that is appearing in the calendar. And because I've set up a work schedule, I can see these icons at the top. Monday, I'm at home. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm in the office. And Friday, I'm at home again. But I can do a bit more than that. So if I click on this day, I can see that I'm at College Green in Bristol. Also in College Green office are these members of my team, Sally and Lucas. This is really nice. It relies on everybody having set up their work schedules, and this is how it's done. I can click on this settings button here. I can also go via the settings button at the top of the window. Here I can say what my work schedule is, and which days I work, and which days typically I'm at home, and which days I'm in the office. And if you've got multiple offices, I might say that on Thursday I'm at the Dean's Gate office, for example. And once this is set up, the assumption that Calendar will make is that my typical work week looks like this. But it could be that I'm doing something different this week. For example, I'm visiting a different office on Thursday. So I'll change that to Deansgate office. And it could be that I'm going into Bristol office on Friday. So these changes that I've made to my calendar for Thursday and Friday, that's not changing my schedule. That's just saying that this week, on those days, that's where I am. And this is important. So it's important that I go to my schedule and that all your users and your team who are using this set up their schedule and are proactive in setting where they are because that's what determines the accuracy of what I see when I click on this card. And this is technically called the Places card. And it will show me the people in my team because these people have also set up their own schedule and said where they are. So that's one of the things that's really nice coming into your new calendar here. There are a couple of other things I'll show you that are coming. When I create a meeting, I'm going to call this a team update meeting, and I'm going to invite a number of my team. And we've got this new switch here called in-person event. So it's telling people that this is an in-person event, but actually it's opening things up in a way that I can get more information about who is going to come to this meeting in person and who is going to come to this meeting remotely. And this is called the hybrid RSVP feature. Because once I switch this on and send it off, the meeting request that goes to the other people is different. I'll show you an example. We can see that it's indicated here that it's an in-person event. And when I look at the acceptance, I now have options. I can say that I'm coming. Maybe I'm not sure yet if I'm coming in person or virtually. Or it's really clear. Yes, I'm in the office that day, I'll come in person. Or no, I'm somewhere else and I'll come virtually. So that information will then go back to the person who set up the meeting. And we can see here that Sally's coming in person. So I can see not only that people have responded, whether they're going to come or not, and whether they're going to be in the room. And when it comes to Places Premium, some of the clever stuff that's coming is that Places is going to be able to look at these meetings that you've got set up that haven't got a room booked yet, and Places can suggest rooms that have the right size based on the number of people that are going to be in person. But even if you don't have that, this might still be useful for you to see who's coming in person, who's coming virtually, just so that you know, and I can make sure that I book a room that's suitable. So let's talk about booking a room. One of the things you get different with Places Premium is the Places Finder. 
But even if you don't have the places finder, you've still got the good old room finder. And so room finder relies on you having your room list set up properly. One room list per building. And then you can see your buildings and you can browse the rooms and your workspaces like so. So I'm going to say I'm going to book the beach room for our meeting and I'll send the update. And that's done. There's one other thing that I'll show you. And there's a couple of other ways in which you can get to this. There's also a places app. And you can see that I've added this into my toolbar here in Outlook. You can also add it into Teams and it's available on the web. Another way to get to it, let me just click on Wednesday, is this. I can see this See More button and that will actually launch the app. Like so. And with Places Core, you get this view on days of the week and where people are and you can configure the people you work with. And you can see I've just got these few people here set up in our demo system, but you can change the people that you work with. You can also set up multiple groups of people. And with this view will also let me see a kind of view where each person is, where they are on any particular days. It also shows me my own schedule. And so this is the core functionality of the app. With premium functionality, you also get the ability to book. So you can book desks, both from the places card that you see in Outlook, but also from here. And it'll tell you, well, you're in this building this day, but you haven't got a desk booked. So why not book a desk? Also, you will have another Explorer button up here where you can explore buildings and you'll be able to see maps for those buildings and you'll be able to see who's in the building and check into those buildings yourself, as well as accessing those other features. So look out for more videos coming from us and we'll talk about and demo those premium features and also how places will interact with Copilot and how you may want to extend your places functionality with other services.